In this video, I want to show you how to come back to the workforce confidently and build relevant skills, not just build relevant skills, but master those skills and make an amazing comeback. But before we get into the main agenda, hey, my name is Kunal Lak. I'm the founder of Data Science Masterminds, and I'm on a mission to help you learn and apply data science effectively to grow in your career. So please hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that you get notified whenever I upload awesome videos such as this. So let's dive in. In this video, I'm going to help you understand the context of career gap, the barrier mindset, the growth mindset, the questions you may have, how to explain your gap, how to master skills, employer rejection criteria, your advantage and some bonus tricks to get you right back into track. So let's get started with the context of career gap. Now let me tell you guys, you are not alone in this journey. Some of them have made a comeback after years of gap and some of them have successfully changed their domain and industry and gotten into new industry. Some took up even leadership roles. Bottom line is that no matter what your reason is, you can make a comeback. Most of the people that I have worked with who want to come back have some of these barriers. And some of the barriers may look like this. I'm not confident enough. I made a mistake. I'm guilty. I'm not skilled as I used to be. I cannot change my industry or domain. I do not have any direction. None of this is true. Instead, what you want to do is cultivate some growth mindset that will allow you to be in the space where you can procure that job or come back to work. Cultivating a growth mindset is essential for you to get back into the work. And how can you do that? You can be confident about it. How you talk about it matters the most. If you are underconfident about it, it's going to be visible to the recruiters. If you are confident about it, it's not going to be visible to the recruiters. Also, you have not made a mistake. Hey, come on, you're a human being. You can make mistakes. There are so many things that can go wrong. So just treat it and own it as if that was a part of your life that is not there anymore. Also, the next part of it, if you believe you can do it, then you will be able to do it. Now, next part is amazing. If not anything else, you have domain experience to get back into the job and all you need to do is pick up skills that are relevant for you to get back into the job. Now you may have certain questions that will be going on in your mind and some of these most common questions are am I eligible or where do I start? First thing let's answer am I eligible or not? Yes you are eligible to come back to work. Come on things happened, life happens and you can come back to work. It's just about building the skills and mastery for coming back to work. Now, even if you are going past this particular question, the next question you'll have is, how do I start or where do I start? There are two ways to do this. One, start off where you left, but the only criteria is you should master the skills and make up for that gap, such that when you come back, you are able to perform as good as somebody who's experienced already. I'll tell you some tricks about how to do this, but that's the first way. And the next one is, Building a skill that allows you to change your domain and industry such as data science. But more on that in another video where I'm going to speak about how to get into data science after a career gap. If you want that video guys, mention that into the comment section below and mention your questions there so that I can make that video for you and help you get into data science after a career gap. Now even the bigger question, how do you explain your gap? The simplest strategy is to tell the truth. Speak confidently. Speak as if you have learned from your experience and you have grown. When you try to be guilty or hide something, the interviewer already sees this. It is the subtle clues that give away that you are not confident. But when you are confident, the interviewer sees this and is willing to ignore that gap and evaluate you on the skills that you bring on the table. The question then is, how do I master skills enough so that I can compete with the people that already have this experience? Which brings us to the question, how do I master the skills? The first thing that you need to begin with is look at what changed. And you can do this by Googling the top trends in your industry by using some of the key terms. Next, instead of building skills that are currently trending, you want to focus on future skills because that's where the demand will be. And then you will be ready when that demand kicks in and be employable. Also, your colleagues, those who are already in work, they are spending six to eight hours a day building hands-on skills. To compete with them, you have to have the discipline to spend four hours each day working on projects and be as good as a working professional so that when you get in front of the interviewer, your confidence is visible and you're able to perform as good as an experienced candidate maybe even tad bit better. You may convince yourself that the employer is rejecting you because of the gap. 
and that might not be the reason. They do not reject you on the basis of a career gap. In fact, they have seen a lot of candidates with a career gap who have not put in effort to build skills and influence them to hire them, which is why that particular decision is based on a general consensus. In what criteria they reject? They typically reject you based on the lack of skills or mastery of those skills for that particular job. The good news is if you can convince them that you are good enough and skilled enough as much as a skilled individual, you are most likely to get the job with confidence. When the decision comes to hire, what advantages do you have against experienced people? The experienced people typically have a one, two, three, maybe even four months of notice period and you can join them immediately. That is your superpower and that is your advantage. You should know that recruiters are eager to hire and onboard people as soon as possible. And if you have the right skill set and the mastery over it, you are most likely to get hired irrespective of your gap or whatever your experience has been. With all this stuff, hope I was able to inspire you to take action and get back to workflows. However, this bonus trick will help you get a job as soon as possible. Now, the trick here is to apply and attend 10 interviews without any hopes of getting hired. This is done so that you can practice building confidence. This will allow you to learn to handle rejection and still be confident rejection after rejection. And the more you build this particular attitude, you will see you are actually building a skill to handle rejection and yet be confident about your skills or lead you into thinking you are not good enough. You are definitely good enough. You are eligible. You can do it. And there is nothing that can stop you to get a job even after a short or a long gap. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to get into data science after a long gap.